All right, let's talk about differential uh, signaling, otherwise known as, also known as balanced signaling. Uh, you'll hear a lot of people call it balanced. I prefer the term differential. And it's, simp it's just a way to transmit a signal from source to load uh, in low noise condition. But before we get into what differential signaling is, let's get in, let's talk a, a little bit about what single-ended signaling is. Single, single-ended signaling. And single-ended signaling is uh, by far the more common and more in intuitive way to transmit a signal from source to load. Um, and in single-ended signaling, you have exactly one ground for any arbitrary number of uh, signal lines um, in your system. So let me draw what I mean. So let's say we have a source and a load. And let's say the source, the chassis, or whatever ground plane is within the, the source has this ground. And let's assume for now, for the sake of argument, that the load has the same ground. We're going to draw one ground connection. This is one copper line, or one copper trace, or one aluminum trace, whatever you want to think of it as, between those two. And this is also ground. And now, w let's say we have a ribbon cable, uh, which is pretty common. Um, that's a pretty common way to transmit uh, information, and we have a lot of loads, uh, I mean, a lot of signals. Signal 1, signal 2, signal 3, and so on. Now, the return currents from each of these signals has to come back through this single ground connection. And uh, one thing I want to point out is that in this just to re-emphasize the point, and this will become more clear when I get into differential signaling, this ground is shorted to the ground over here, and it's shorted to the ground over here. That's different than what we'll, we'll see in differential signaling. Now, what's the problem with this scenario? Well, there's nothing to stop the ground currents from this signal, from commingling with the ground return currents from this signal, um, and they can also commingle with something else coming in from the load, and so this potential here can really bounce around. That's one problem with single-ended signaling. Uh, you're referencing to something that can bounce around, and so uh, it's not a steady reference point. Well, what's the advantage of single-ended signaling? And the advantage is you don't need many wires. For here we have one, two, three signal wires, and we have need only one ground wire. So for any N wires, you only need N, for any N signals, you only need N plus one wires to accommodate your scenario. And you'll see as we go along, that's very different from differential signaling, where for N wires, you need two N, um, N signals, you need two N wires to accommodate your system. And that adds a lot of copper or a lot of metal, adds a lot of complexity. And you might wonder, why would you ever want to do it? Well, the answer is noise reduction. Noise reduction. Noise reduction. There are two problems with single-ended signaling. One, two. The first is that the ground may, in fact, be different at the two ends. So instead of this being drawn as a symbol like this, maybe we should draw it like this. So you're referencing to something that's not the same across the whole signal chain. Second your signal wires may pick up noise with respect to the ground. And this could be related to number one, but it could also be that maybe this wire up, up here is passing through some sort of noisy environment and sees some voltage noise on it where the ground sees none of that. And so that noise will feed through to your final measurement. I'm going to go into some examples now, uh, but before I do, I want to point out that there is a point that can get confusing and that is that uh, a single-ended, a two-wire single-ended system looks pretty similar to a differential system. And in fact, if they are terminated this properly, if the single-ended system is terminated properly and balanced, it is the same thing. Uh, but most single-ended systems are not designed to be terminated properly, meaning that over here at the load, they are shorted to the load, where you'll see in the differential case uh, it's, it's using a high, a high impedance load rather than uh, being shorted to the ground plane. Um, and also, they typically are not balanced, and, and that'll become more clear as I go through it. 
Let me scroll down and draw it as an example. Carrying our, our previous image forward, let's say we have three signals and one ground. And let's say our ground with respect to time, so this, this is time, and this is voltage, and that's gonna be the same for both of these cases. Let's say signal one comes in, it's, oops. Signal one comes in and it, it rises from a low state to a high state and stays in the high state, and then some sort of glitch or something else in the system, it passes by a noisy source, whatever, it comes along and you see a voltage spike there, it stays high for a while, and then it comes down and then settles. Uh, let's say signal two, we didn't send any information along it, so it just looks like that. Signal three, the same. And ground, let's say for whatever reason it was very clean and it, it is uh, very quiet as well. Now when you get to the load end, when you're measuring this signal with respect to ground, that glitch will come through and you'll see it as, as noise. And we point out that this, this signal one is referenced to ground, this signal two is referenced to ground, and this signal three is referenced to ground at the load end. Now how might this look um, in the differential case? Well, in the differential case, we're going to make several self-referenced pairs of wires. And, and so here, in the single-ended case, you had three signals, so you need four wires. Here in the differential case, we have three signals, so we need six wires. How is this going to look? Well, let's say we construct a circuit where signal one plus comes in, and it looks just like signal one from the other example. And it comes in, and there's a voltage spike, and then it comes down like that. And we've split it up so signal one minus is the inverse of that. It comes along. It sees the same voltage spike, so it spikes in the same direction, and then comes back up and over like this. And signal two is just a flat line, and signal three is just a flat line. Now when we get to the load and we make a measurement between these two, this, this glitch, this noise, is going to not show up in our final measurement uh, because it's the same. We're, we're going to measure signal 1 plus with respect to signal 1 minus, and that's something I want to point out. This is measured with respect to this. This is measured with respect to this. This is measured with respect to this. There's no ground in this system over here. Uh, and so when we subtract signal 1 plus or signal 1 minus from signal 1 plus, that, that glitch uh, gets canceled out. Let me draw a quick circuit model of what's going on in the single-ended case. Here I've drawn a circuit model for signal one, there's signal one, ground, there's ground. Now what can go wrong in this case? Here's the source and here's the load where we're making the measurement. You'd make the measurement here, VL. That noise source here you can represent as this this noise source here and there are as I said, two problems with this system. One, here the signal line can pick up noise with respect to the ground, so that noise didn't show up on the ground, and so you're making this measurement over here of this noise source with respect to a quiet ground. Also, uh, this ground, especially if you're traveling long distances, may not be the same ground as you have over here, and so that's the second problem. Okay, let's go more into differential signaling. Uh, first I'm going to motivate an intuitive example and then get more into the circuit diagram of what's going on. Let me scroll down and draw. Let's go through a quick example that, that you should be familiar with and this is the telephone system in uh, any country. Uh, here I'm talking about the United States. Let's say you've got this guy number one who's talking to his buddy over here, guy number two, and guy number one speaks into his telephone and that signal, there's an electrical signal that gets transmitted into this box that I've labeled source and then travels some distance and this, let's say it's a hundred kilometers between these two. It's probably, I don't know how the system is exactly constructed but that seems maybe plausible. And then that signal gets over to the load somehow and comes out to, to this guy's telephone and it comes out through the speaker and he hears what's going on. What's between the source and the load? Well, what you do is you have just a very simple scenario where you have twi uh, twisted pair. Twisted pair. So there's wire one. And let me change colors to keep it clear. And here's wire two. They're just twisted together. 
the telephone system is differential signaling. This is, uh, say, V1 plus, and this is V1 minus, or maybe this is ground. The important part is that when they get to the load, they both see a very, very high impedance. And um, so they aren't connected with the ground at the load, which may be looking like this, whereas at the source it was looking like this. So we don't want to consider the grounds at either, either end. And as they pass through this 100 kilometers of length, they almost certainly are picking up lots of noise from stray power lines. Maybe there's a power glitch here, uh, a voltage glitch there, but it will also affect the other guy in exactly the same way. And it's, act it's, it's really amazing that the telephone system works as well as it does when it's using such a simple system. Uh, it's differential signaling using twisted pairs of wires. Okay, I'm going to stop and go on to the next video where I'll get into more uh, uh, a more in-depth circuit model of differential signaling.